Thank you so much, Catherine, and praise the Lord, everyone. It's again a pleasure to have us uh, share together. I was given a topic on being filled as a way of dealing with uh, satanic opposition as a remedy. Such a powerful topic. Uh, I need to know how much time I have. Um, uh, you can, uh, we are looking at uh, uh, completing at 35. Six, 35, uh, okay. 35 past uh, six. Yeah. That's okay. Um, I'll share but we don't limit some... the Holy Spirit. Lead according. That's okay. Um, uh, I'm looking at this. This has been one of my best sharing in the, as we've been walking through this journey of salvation. Actually, one of the uh, one of the topic under which I share it is a. Uh, the role of the Holy Spirit in, in spiritual warfare, especially in the marketplace. So for, this is more of a marketplace uh, encounter. So I'm excited to share with us uh, a bit of some of the experience. And uh, we will just share some few uh, experiences we've had in this regard. Of course, you know the background that this church uh, in Antioch, they had all the giftings of the Holy Spirit operating, all the offices operating, and they were waiting upon the Lord, ministering to the Lord. Someone said that one of the ways to minister to the Lord is by ministering to his people. So as they gathered, praying, worshiping, praising, and all the other activities in worship, the Holy Spirit spoke. I said, separate for me, uh, Paul and Barnabas and Paul, and so to the work I'm calling them to do after fasting, laying hands and all the other Christian things they did, they were sent out. And the moment they stepped on the assignment, they meet certain people here. Uh, and normally we need to appreciate the fact that just because the Lord has sent you does not mean that there will be no difficulty. Just because the Lord has sent you, it doesn't mean that you will not experience opposition. Just because the Lord has sent you, has called you, has anointed you, the church has laid hands on you, they have fasted for you, they have commissioned you, doesn't mean that the thing will just be sailing through. No, uh, this church is a very typical example. However, we see that when you are sent by the Holy Spirit, even when you have uh, these challenges, you will be able to, to thrive amid this, the challenges. So it is important that we, we balance up this issue. Actually, someone was saying, uh, Dr. Ota was saying that, you know, this chapter is emphasizing the, the authority of the Spirit as the third person of the divinity, you know, being sent out by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the church played its part, but then the Holy Spirit completed the whole cycle. So when we, they come into the assignment, they are moved by faith, they have obeyed the calling, they come in. We now see in verse 8, and I'm reading from this version of my amplifier, it says, but Elimas, the wise man, other version said the sorcerer, for that is the translation of his name. Again, my version says, which he had given himself. I like to read some of these. They, they bring out a few things. Most likely, he had because he had perfected this art of sorcery, he had given himself a name. There are some names in town there. I don't know that some of you know them. Motura Kungo. You know, because he had perfected the art of wickedness, he gave himself a name. One who sits on the leopard. <laughs> so uh, I can see this Elmas is in that category. Because he had really practiced the art of wickedness, he even gave himself a name. Mm -hmm. he, he opposed them. That's the sharing we are doing. He opposed them, seeking to keep the proconsul from accepting the faith. Now, I have a burden on this matter. The question is, how many 
of our leaders who love to get saved, but that the witches in the offices in the, in the, near the, in the palace, near the thrones, uh, how many of those are turning away the hearts of our leaders? We need men and women of God who are filled with the Holy Spirit to have an encounter, even visiting. One of the things that I've been doing, especially when you're dealing with the marketplace, is to visit. Sometimes we need the Reverend Jeffers and the team to visit the offices, also fully dressed <laughs> in their color. And they visit some of our offices and just we have visited. You don't have to even preach, but you visit and, and speak one or two, three words. Why? We are dealing with the real witches who are practicing real witchcraft in real life. Real life. They even carry names. They have been given them. And their role is to stop our leaders from accepting Christ. They are always near the thrones. So whole teaching can do about the thrones. They, they, they are always around the thrones. And they are stopping our leaders from accepting Christ. That's why we need some people who will encounter with them. You know? So... By the way, verse 7 is very powerful. He says he, the, this guy, the, 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 the proconsul, was a man who wanted to hear the gospel. But then there were two wicked guys, the first prophet and the sorcerer. They were his assistants. Who are the assistants of our leaders? They are responsible for turning them away from the faith. You know, it is in this particular uh, place. So how many agents of darkness are turning away leaders? So we need to, uh, to, to strategize and address them. Verse 9, but so, who is also called Paul, filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit, looked steadily at Elimus and said, you master in every form of deception, now, these are very powerful words here. They are people, they are agents of darkness who are masters. Masters in every form of deception. So deception takes different forms, but they are those who are masters, the architects. You know, he's the master of every form of deception and recklessness, and scrupulousness, and the wickedness and say, you son of the devil, he has sold out to be his, 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 his father, doing his father's business. You enemy of everything that is upright and good, will you never stop perverting, making crooked the straight path of the Lord and plotting against, he's saying, he's saving purposes. And the Lord did. Very well. So these sorcerers were doing all these nine or ten things in that office, yet it was a public office. How many of our public offices, who is occupying them? Who is the CEO? Who is the assistant? Who, who is in the office? Who is at the gate? Who is the gatekeeper? In this particular case, we had terrible guys manning a public office. We also need to rediscover that the public square is also God's square. And many times the church is shunning this, but this, the Paul is showing us that actually this square can be uh, conquered for Jesus. The, however, the issue that we need to are filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? The gatekeepers there, the guys manning those offices. We have a very terrible description here. They are sorcerers, they are false prophets. You check where you work. This 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 this, this list uh, is, 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 is long. They are masters in every form of deception. They are reckless and scrupulousness. They are wicked, they are sons of the devil, the the they are enemies of everything good. No matter what you bring, doesn't make sense to them, not because it is wrong but because you are Christian, I've had some experience on this. They just don't oppose because what you're saying is wrong. Actually, they will oppose you and they, they bring it 
they give it to someone else and bring the same idea and they stamp it and prove it and applaud and promote and lift. Well, for you, they have eliminated you. They do all this maneuvering in the public square. So we need men and women of God who are filled with the Holy Spirit to be able to challenge, to counter and reverse and establish the kingdom of God in those places because the gatekeepers there are, uh, are agents of, of, of darkness. So we see Paul, we are told that he was full of the Holy Spirit. Again, the list is longer. They, are, they pervert and they make crooked the straight path of the Lord. They plot against his saving purposes. I've seen some of this, especially as I've been in the public space. You know, someone, because they are your supervisor, they want to compromise you. You know, they plot against the saving purposes of God. We need to really, really to be filled with the Holy Spirit to challenge and encounter and withstand this kind of guys. Look at the CV they carry. Heavy CV, heavy CV, you know. But what will make a difference is what we have been told that Paul was filled and controlled. I like this version, filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit and rebuked him, he challenged him. And they, there was this power encounter. We will need to go to fill us with the Holy Spirit and we have an, a power encounter with the forces that are controlling uh, public spaces, families, and every area where God is sending us to be able to deal with this. So he looked at him and he spoke into his life. He exposed his ugly stuff uh, and he Verse 11 says, and now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you'll be blind. He issued the sanctions and injunctions against them. Now, and for sometimes believers don't understand this kind of warfare. Those guys, they also release wicked stuff against us. Thank God you've not had issues. But they do that when they see that you're standing there, when they issue sentences, injunctions against you. And when you are sensitive, you even begin seeing dreams, through dreams and visions, you know, through certain events, you see that there is a contention, resistance. So Paul, full of the Holy Spirit, he restrains this guy. He issues injunctions. He issues, um, he, says them, he tells him that you will be blind. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the hand of the Lord is upon you. And you'll be blind, that you'll be unable to see the sun for a time. He cripples him. <clears throat> he he there is a demonstration of power. He restrains him. He says, No, you can't continue doing this. There, there, there must be uh, a, a, a price for your wickedness. You must experience some restraint. And he puts him in his place. He puts him in his place. How? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he issued a sentence against him and he took effect. The Bible says, instantly there fell upon him a mist and a darkness. And he groped about seeking persons who would lead him by the hand. This was immediate reaction. You can't, this, this was an immediate reaction, and uh, uh, the guy realized that there was a higher power than what he had known. You know, it reminds me of Acts chapter 8. You know, Simon the sorcerer, he was called a great power until the real power came. So we need to be filled by the Holy Spirit and they carry this in our places of work, carry this in our mission fields where God has assigned us <clears throat> to be able to help those who are under siege. This man, we are told, is a good man, but he was under siege. He was under siege by the Jewish wizard and sorcerer and first prophets, by Jesus and all the others. 
the Bible says in verse 7 that the broken to suggest Paulus was an intelligent and a sensible man of sound understanding. He summoned for us, he summoned to him Barnabas and so and he sought to hear the word of God. Why? Con concerning salvation in the kingdom of God attained through Christ. He wanted to hear, but he was seized by these uh, multiple wicked guys. They operated in different offices, false prophets, sorcerers. They, they, they carried the names of wickedness. They were anointed from hell. And they are manning the gates of public sphere. Even when their supervisor says, I want this, they work against his own decisions. I don't know that I've experienced this, but I've experienced this. I know my dear people. They, you have an appointment with the supervisor or the leader. You go in and then the secretary says, he's not there. Who are you? He's not there. Even when you're hearing that he's there. Those are bad gatekeepers. You know? And the, 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 the guys, they are standing the way. Paul has an invitation. And the guy is saying, you can't see him. And then Paul charges at him. And he issues a sentence which is detected immediately. Now, verse 12 is very crucial, very powerful. Then the proconsul believed, became a Christian. When he saw what had occurred, I normally ask a question, how many of our kings, traditional kings, our leaders, whether politicians, presidents, MPs, prime ministers, cabinet ministers, judges, and the rest in the hierarchy, would love to get saved, but they are under siege. They cannot try to attempt to get saved because the surrounding is saying you can't, for you, you are not supposed to. But this guy, he saw the demonstration of God's power, immediate chain reaction between his, his demonic guys were overpowered by the divine man. These were sent, Barnabas and Paul, by the Holy Spirit. And immediately he saw this. What did he do? He believed. He believed when he saw the demonstration of the power of God. You know, he was astonished and deeply touched at the teaching concerning the Lord and from him. You know, so he got converted. He believed in Christ because he had a desire. I think he had the heart in the was a crusader. Maybe they had even asked for permission and the letters had gone to him and said, but I also want to meet this. But the two guys who were near him could not allow him to come. We thank God that Paul, who was led by the Holy Spirit, was able to discern that there is an opposition here, which is satanic. Because we, according to protocol, we were invited, we have followed the protocol, but these guys are just resisting us. The Holy Spirit, when we have filled the Holy Spirit, we will be able to discern will be able to discern and take the necessary steps. There will be no more delays. So we now see that some of these delays, denials, can actually be demonically inspired. Satan is trying to throw a spanners in the way to resist and hinder the work of God. We need to ask the Lord to help us to understand and discern. When is it that uh, the enemy is resisting and we should take action? and when we should wait and hold on. So Paul here we see, he did not uh, wait for a long time. He had to confront the guy, having received the invitation, he had to confront the guys and deal with them out of the way. And the end result, we see the, the governor getting converted. Could it be that our governors are not getting converted because we have not gone deeper we have not been soaked in the Holy Spirit. We have not been infused with the Holy Spirit. We have not been controlled by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we have been filled, but we have not been controlled. So we could not be able to discern when, knowing the timing on when to deal with what. 
Apostle Paul was able to discern and take appropriate action, spiritual action at the right time. And we see this man rescued. We, if we are going to rescue men who have been taken by wickedness, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to know the timing, to know, understand uh, what the Lord is doing at what time. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of you, you may not know that there is a story we have in Entebbe there. One of the, the leaders of the witches in Uganda had trained a young man from childhood, I think seven or six years. <clears throat> and by the time he was given an assignment to come to Entebbe to do certain things, it was about 26, 26 or 30 so. And because we had been doing work, walking, prayer walks, prayer journeys, they sent him to a place. And then when the place where he was going to plant witchcraft, then he had a voice say, don't plant it there. He got shocked because all along the voices he had been hearing, the only voices of, of, of demons. And uh, he said, he got confused, but he said, let me plant, let me do my assignment. And I ran very quickly. When he tried to go to another place to do the same thing, the voice said, I say, don't plant that here. The guy ran. He ran. And the first place he landed to was the church. He understood that there was a different power in the territory than what he had known. And that that force in that territory had resisted him. I don't know how he knew it was the voice of God, but what he did was to run to go to the church. And when he reached there, I told them, I want to get saved. But he had been captured. That person is, you know them. They are the leaders of these wicked guys in the Uganda. The guy got saved, prayed for, gave us very many testimonies and words which I can't share now on, on this group. But he told us a lot of terrible things that are being done by powerful business people in town. And uh, after some time, he tried to go back to tell them that I failed in assignment. They arrested him and said, no, for you, you have been dedicated to this worship of these uh, uh, idol gods. You, they have to come back to you. But because he had confessed salvation, they put him in prison, they prisoned him, they they said that this piece has come back to you. They never came back to him. And uh, at one time, uh, he got up in the escape from them and he came back. So there is a power in the gospel. When we are full of the Holy Spirit and we act under the leading of the Holy Spirit, God is behind his word to perform it. Will he have the vessel? Will you be the vessel? Will I be the vessel? God will use to reach those high places, to reach the governors, to reach the traditional rulers, to reach the government officials. We need to be uh, filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes circumstances in our office move us out of the control of the Holy Spirit. We need now to be conscious as believers. Because the enemy will use circumstances around you to actually upset you and uh, move you out of the alignment with God and you will not be effective. We also need to discern that because he is looking for ways of making us irrelevant in the marketplace. And Paul did not allow that. No, he didn't want to get engaged in arguments and everything. No, he waited for him to resist him and then he spoke directly to the power behind him. He spoke directly to the character he is, and he issued an injunction under the, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and that's all of the matter. Most likely, I don't know about you, but for me, I know in my workspace, there are people, they can even be office assistants, but they are known that if that one is against you, hey, you'll have problems. If that one... If, you know, your thing will never reach the supervisor, the boss. 
as long as you don't are in, not in a good term with that, they are maybe lower in rank, but they are highly positioned in the spiritual realm. We need, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to be able to address them. I had another experience at my workplace. Someone was just an office assistant, but he was spiritually high. Whenever you complain and speak, the managers will respond. So he, we had an initial debate. This is your assignment. This is not my assignment. And he said, you, you don't know me. <laughs> yeah, you will see. What I'm telling you, you will do it. I said, you know, everybody here has their role. I thought he was joking. When I went back in my place to pray, I began seeing this guy in the dreams. You know, he's attacking me. I'll pray. And then whenever I'll come in the morning, you know what he'll do? He'll begin to want to open up an argument so that he releases demonic activity in me. I had not grown to the level where I am now. So sometimes I'll get in an uh, argument. Until I began to get sick, I said, no, I'm not going to argue with this guy. I began, I began to get sick because I was not standing properly in my threshold. So he was looking for a way of opening me up and removing that garment so that I become vulnerable. That's very crucial people to understand and take note. The way you respond to this demonic man will determine how well your position to, to deal with them. So I remember at that time uh, I was falling sick and that kind of thing. But when I go back home in my dreams, I see the guys chasing me, all those kind of things. So I took off leave. When I took off leave, I went and prayed and asked, Lord, Lord, show me what is the issue. Where does he get his power base? And I remember the Lord showing me. He had the, a, a, a consecrated the bango or whatever on his hand. So when I came from leave, he said, hey, you are back again. I'm going to start on you where I ended. So this time I did that certain lesson. So I said, I greet you in the name of Jesus. And I touched that, um, that bang. I said, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I disarm you. I disarm this, this thing that you've been using. I paralyze it and neutralize it with the blood of Jesus. When I stopped praying, they said, hey, you guys. Hey. And that was the end of that, that argument. He never again. Uh, we feel the Holy Spirit to be able to discern, to be able to discern, are we positioned, are we controlled? Because we can be Christian, but then we are moved out of the control of the Holy Spirit. We will be delayed, we will be diverted. We need to be filled and controlled. Our action need to be controlled. Our action need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. If you're controlled, you will not be diverted. I like Paul. He went straight and addressed the guy in the spiritual realm. And the moment he was neutralized, he didn't need to preach a lot. He didn't need to preach a lot. Praise the name of the Lord. I'll now um, summarize my sharing by sharing with us a few issues here. We need to understand that we are in this season of ascension to Pentecost, but our sending authority, who is Christ, knew the sphere of operation and he told the disciples to wait until they are closed, endued and empowered. Both in Luke 24, the closing verses, in Acts chapter 1, it says, wait and be empowered by the Holy Spirit before you go and become my witnesses, beginning from where you are to the ends of the earth. The sender knew the terrain and he knew that we need to be empowered to be endued with the Holy Spirit before we can do our assignment. Actually, at one point, Jesus said, I'm sending you out as a sheep among the wolves. The sender knows the terrain and he knows the equipment we need to be able to thrive 
and we stand in our mission fields. The other thing, <clears throat> I think it's Dr. again, Dr. Ota, who has said that no permanent or effective ministry can occur without the presence and blessing of the Holy Spirit. We need to be friends with the Holy Spirit. We need to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need to, uh, to have that closer relationship with the Holy Spirit. I think there is one man of God who has said that he was so close to the Holy Spirit that he would even wake up in the morning and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Are we even conscious of the Holy Spirit? Why? We will never do permanent or effective ministry without his presence, blessing, and the power. So we need uh, the, the Holy Spirit uh, in such a way that we will be able to accomplish our assignment in God. I've just highlighted a few. What do we need to be filled? Of course, we need to be believers. We need to believe. We need believers. We need to believe. When you look at Apostle Peter's sermon in Acts chapter 2, you will get all this sermon, you know, this which I'm sharing. You know, we need to believe. We need to believe. This promise is for you and your children, and as many as will believe through you. You know, we need to believe uh, to be able to receive and be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is um, part of the salvation package. Um, when he was preaching again, he said somewhere, I repent. He was telling the Jews to repent. We need to repent from sins that uh, defile us and descend away the Holy Spirit uh, in order for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I like the one of waiting. Wait. Jesus is the one who told his disciples, wait. Wait until you are empowered. Wait. Stay in the city. Don't go in the villages. Don't first stay in the city and get empowered before you can go out. Wait. Wait. And we are in this 10 period of waiting. We need to be waiting. But waiting how? That word waiting, I think in the Greek, has an element of expectancy. We need to wait expectantly, number one. Number two, we need to be waiting prayerfully. When they went to the upper room after the ascension, they definitely, they stayed there indefinitely. I like my word. They stayed there indefinitely until the day when the Holy Ghost came upon them. They waited in prayer. We should wait in prayer. We should wait expectant because the one who has promised, he is faithful and he will do it. He is faithful and he will do it. Of course, there is the element of unity They're in one place, in one accord. Agreement is crucial. They were in one place, in one accord, then the Holy Spirit. One of the things I was uh, meditating on, First Corinthians chapter 15, it says that when Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to different people. And at one point, he appeared to 500 of his disciples. He appeared to them. But at the time of the, the time the Holy Ghost came, there were 120 in the upper room. Where were the others? Waiting is a hard thing that most likely others had gone to do other things. We should be, uh, we need as Lord to give us the grace of patience and waiting. We need to be in unity, at least in agreement, in agreement. And then the Holy Spirit came. The last one I can share is um, we need to have an understanding of especially prophet times and seasons. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, you see the calendar which God gave Moses in Exodus of has eternal consequences. And Jesus fulfilled the first three feasts of the Jews, which they used to do religiously. But Jesus, in a year, all the first three were fulfilled. 
in him, he was our Passover lamb. You know, he was the first fruit from among the dead. He, he was a sinless man, you know, the feast of unleavened bread. He fulfilled the first three feasts of the Jews. And it is now this year say that don't leave Jerusalem until I send the promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father, which I'm sending to you. And you've heard me say many times now, not many days from now, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you'll be able to go and do my assignment. You know, so we need to appreciate the especially prophet timings and seasons. You know, we need to appreciate that. When you know the timing, you position yourself in that timing. Just like we are, this is a season, a gate of waiting. We are between the ascension and the Pentecost. Now, some people say, ah, that was that time. I don't need. I want to conclude by saying, at the first appointment of the Holy Spirit in chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles, they began doing work. But now in chapter 4, we see them again filled. These are the same people who are in the upper room, but in chapter 4, they are failing. They are being filled again. And much grace was given unto them, which means there is room to be refilled. So we need a people, a church which is active, understanding time, prophet times and seasons, and then positioning themselves uh, to, to tap in God and then go out under the power of the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, to be able to address mission assignment and wherever God has positioned us in the public squares to be able to bring fruit, to be able to bring the harvest. The harvest is indeed great. The laborers are few. We need the Holy Spirit filled laborers for the harvest to come in. Praise the name of the Lord. So we will need to be refilled. These are some of the issues. We need to have revival prayer encounters like it was in Acts chapter 4, to be able to be refilled. Why do we need to be refilled? We leak. We are in the same world where things are happening. But also to replenish. So when we have revival prayer encounters, we are able to recharge and then go back to the same field. God bless you, people. Amen. Amen. God bless you too. Amen. Brother Rooney. Uh, for blessing wow. us this morning. You have been such a blessing. Let us pray for Brother Roni. Have a loving Father. We thank you for the way you have used your child as a vessel this morning to speak to us. Lord, my master, he has poured himself out, O oh Lord. He has shared according to your word. He has brought us a package to help us today, Lord, my master, to revive us. May you revive him, O oh Lord. May you refill him, O oh Lord, my master. May you watch over him and upon his family, upon his children, upon his wife, upon whatever he does, upon his ministry, Lord. May you revive him, Lord, my master. May you fill him with power, O oh Lord, my master. May he move in great anointing, like Paul did, O oh Lord, to rebuke all satanic agents that come his way. As he goes to work, as he goes to minister, Lord, my master, may you give him power of discernment, Lord, my master, greater than ever before, Lord, my master. May he move out to revive more than ever before to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us all unmute and uh, we ask the Lord. We have been challenged. Paul was able to discern the evil man. Let us ask the Lord because the Lord is looking for men and women filled with the Holy Spirit to encounter all satanic powers and their representatives. Let us ask the Lord the Holy Spirit to fill each one of us, that today you'll be that woman and man 
to be the representative of the Holy Spirit. Let us unmute and pray. Heaven loving Father, we want to ask the Holy Spirit today. Use me, O Lord, my master, my mother, O Lord. Pray that you do everything for me. The Holy Spirit Jesus 
God. And this morning, Orita will rest in the toilet. We say, no, God, in Jesus' name, they will make connections and bring that connection. We cut them from other plantations and connections. We you really God, we rest the water in that charm. But the land was protected from you, and the land was protected from you out. So today, we speak the office of coming out for the Titanic agent in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We are 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 Amen. Yes, we saw that Paul used his injunction against him. In Jesus' mighty name, we, uh, we release the injunction from oh God. All, all people in our churches, who have the authority in our churches, all those in Jesus' name with this injunction to be drawn them. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, Father, to be. Then they be a master, not a master, not to be a father. Your best to let the name of Jesus Christ and God. That even in our office of us, we go, Oh Lord, my master, we each injunction for Lord, my master. separate from you, oh Lord, but you will lead us, Lord. You will lead whatever comes out of our tongue. You will lead whatever comes through our ears, through our eyes, oh Lord. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.